Okay guys, today I'm gonna show you the method I use that I consider to be the most effective and one of the cheapest options for killing the invasive tallow trees we have on our property. It also works on a lot of other types of trees, but for us, we have a very problematic tree, which is the tallow. And anybody who's ever been around them knows that if you try to cut a tallow tree down, you get about a thousand new ones uh, from that one stump. Every inch of root will sprout a new tree. The stump will sprout a new tree. Uh, so if you don't actually kill the stump on a tallow tree, you make your problem exponentially worse by trying to just cut them. So you absolutely have to kill them. So I've seen all types of things uh, on YouTube, online, talking to biologists, uh, talking to property managers about what chemicals you need. And there's lots of them that they recommend and most of them are very expensive, but through trial and error, and I'm gonna say that I've probably killed thousands of tallow trees with this method We've got about 40 acres we've recovered that was just solid tallow trees. I found a chemical that works almost 100% of the time and it's probably the cheapest herbicide on the shelf. So I've got it right here. This is a, a 2,4-D type product. So 2,4-D is designed to kill broadleaf weeds, but it also kills a lot of woody trees. And for this particular one, if you mix it at about a 2% concentration, uh, it'll kill, I'm gonna say about 90% of the tallow trees on first application. And you'll get a few of them that re-sprout with kind of a weak, a weak re-sprout. And you can come back and spray this on, uh, on the new sprouts and it'll, it'll kill it. And tallow trees, they have very trashy wood. So in about a year and a half's time, it rots away. So I'm not gonna cut a lot of tallow trees today. Um, so I'm only gonna mix up half a gallon. So for that, I need about four, four and a half ounces of, uh, of the 2,4-D. I've already measured it out, it's right here. I'm gonna put that in my sprayer. I'm gonna rinse that out in a minute. And then I like to use a little bit of non-ionic surfactant. Uh, so this, uh, it's so old, the label is about falling off. But for this, I only need about a half or one ounce. You don't need a whole lot but a little bit of it really makes it stick to whatever you're spraying and penetrate. So it definitely helps. So that's all you need. Uh, it's 2,4-D with a little bit of surfactant uh, mixed at that little bit higher concentration than you would spray for, uh, you wouldn't want to spray this concentration on your pastures because it'll kill a lot of uh, mildly sensitive uh, grasses and things that you don't want to kill. But for tree stumps, this will knock them out, uh, like I said, most of the time in one single application. So I'm going to show you two different methods I use. One is a lot of times if i got an area I know I'm not going to get to real soon with clearing or trying to plant grass, you could go through and do the hack and squirt method, which will, you don't have to cut the tree down. You can leave the tree standing and it'll die. And in a couple of two, three years, at least here in the South, about two years, the tree has rotted enough that it's fallen and the stump is soft. You can come through and basically bush hog those trees after two seasons. Uh, or if you're ready to start bush hogging and keep an area clear, you can cut the tree down flush with the ground where you can roll over with a bush hog and then you can, uh, you can bush hog over it. You can spray that stump and it will not regrow in a year or two's time. The stump is rotten and you'll never even know it was there. So I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna show you cutting a tree and uh, the hack and squirt way we, uh, we kill these trees. Okay, so I said I'd show you a couple of methods. Uh, this is actually the wrong time of year to do the hack and squirt, but I figure while I'm doing it, I could show you. And what we're going to do with the hack and squirt is we're going to make some chops into the tree uh, to expose the uh, the living tissue on the tree, the cambium layer. Uh, a tree this size, I mean, you can see it's about six or eight inches across. You probably want two to three uh, slices in a trunk this size, and this tree is on this is part of the same tree, this other trunk. So I'm gonna do two or three slices on it and I'm gonna spray. Now the mistake I see a lot of people doing that is uh, just bad for your personal, your personal safety is they come in, they cut, and then they wanna come spray uh, onto it, which what you don't wanna do is you do not wanna get that chemical all over your ax. Cause then the next time you come to chop, a little bit of that sprays all over you 
and you really don't want to get covered in any of these chemicals you're spraying. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come around and see I made those two chops already. I'm going to make a third one. I'm going to make three on this one. One, two, three. And I've got my sprayer. I come and spray a little bit of chemical in there. And that is going to be all it takes to kill this tree. Now, a lot of them, what happens is these trees don't, they don't actually die super fast from this method. It's going to take this tree all year to die, which is strange. Uh, but it's going to actually start rotting from within, at least with these tallow trees where it'll look like it's dying, but it's going to start looking sick. And then by year two, this thing's gonna be so rotten it's falling over. I can uh, I can actually show you some examples of that on our property, the stuff I did last fall. But the best time for this is once you get past the active growing season. So when you get into, for our area in South Louisiana, you just wanna get past the big spring uh, flush of growth. So for us about May, all the way through fall when they lose their leaves, this method is extremely effective. All right, so the other method for a little bit more instant gratification is, like I said, you come in here and you cut these trees flush with the ground. You see, I did that. These aren't real big. I didn't uh, use the greatest technique of cutting them. I just basically sawed them off ground level, let the tree fall. I'm gonna come pick them up with my tractor later. But basically, if I don't spray this, this stump will re-sprout, at least with these tallow trees. And then every root, so within 40 feet of this tree, I'll get a thousand new sprouts of tallow trees and I won't be able to control their growth. So it'll just uh, be out of control. So it's imperative with these tallow trees that you spray the stump. Now, sometimes I mix the blue dye in with my chemical when I'm cutting big areas so I don't lose track of what I sprayed and what I haven't sprayed. But basically what I do is I'll cut a dozen trees like this, cut for 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'll stop and I'll go spray all the stumps. And it's not difficult, I mean, you just wanna come in and wet the top of that stump pretty good, especially around the edge where there's the bark and the living tissue. You wanna make sure you get that area. And once you spray that stump with this mixture, it is dead, all of the roots will die. And maybe, maybe it makes a little sprout uh, from the stump right here. And you can just come back later in the summer and hit that with a uh, one quick little spray of this 2,4-D mixture and it's over. That tree is gone, it's dead, and these things rot super fast. So you can see this area right here. We're in the winter, but you see there's a beautiful live oak right there. I got a pine tree right here, another live oak. Uh, there's a couple of honey locusts in here, and there's tons of these tallow trees. Uh, there's some dogwood, some elm, some different trees. A lot of them I don't want, but I'll come through here and I'll kill all the trees I don't want and I can leave all these beautiful trees for some silver pasture and it'll look like a beautiful park uh, in just a year or two of us starting to work on this area. So anyway, I hope that helps you guys out. Like I said, very cheap, very effective way of getting rid of these uh, tallow trees which don't have much value for our farm. So we can get some, uh, some grass growing in here and we can, uh, leave a nice canopy, a silver pasture type area with leaving the good, pretty trees. So hope that helps and I'll see y'all on the next one.